Welcome back to XR Engineer Training. This is part 16, Field Change Scripts. In this video, we'll implement a field change script, which will pause the time to assignment timer if an owner is assigned, and start it again if an owner is unassigned. We'll also look at two other scripts as quick examples of where field change scripts may be useful. And with that, let's get to it. Field change scripts are a type of automation that XOR will execute when the value in the assigned field changes. To see these scripts, we can navigate to our automations library and we can search by tags. Field change scripts will have the tag field change triggered. Now these are commonly used to take action for things like a severity change. If the severity on an incident changes, Maybe you want to send an email notifying the assigned owner or the SOC manager, etc., that that incident has increased in severity. We can also use field change trigger scripts to start and stop timers as we've previously covered. In this case, looking at change scripts, which will stop the time to assignment timer when an owner is assigned. In order to configure a specific field to execute this script on change, that is configured from the field settings. Go to settings, object setup, incidents and fields. And for example, if we look for the owner field, we can edit it and see that in a previous video, we set it to use the stop time to assign on owner change script when the value of this field changes. Looking at our available scripts, Please note that the script must be tagged with field change triggered in order for it to be selected on the field settings. We're going to build a variation of the stop time to assign on owner change. In this case, when an owner is assigned, we actually want to pause the timer. And if an owner is ever unassigned and the value is blank, we want to start that timer again. So to do this, we'll hit cancel. We'll go back to our automations and we'll create ourselves a new automation. On owner change, again, making sure that we use our title case format and hit save. Once again, we'll remove the example code that is provided. And in this case, we're gonna add the tag to ensure that we can use this as a field change triggered script. Again, searching for the tag and adding that here. This will make our script available to us on the incident field configuration to be used as a field change trigger script. Differ from, differ from standard automations in a few ways. Firstly, we don't need to define any arguments or outputs as part of this script. XOR will actually natively pass various arguments into this when the script is triggered. To demonstrate, we'll go back to our script helper, we'll search for args, and we'll print the arguments that are passed into this script when it executes. Add the print statement and hit save. And then we could go configure our owner field to use this specific script. Configuration for our owner field. We can select from the drop down and see that our new script is available to be picked because we tagged it as such. We can select the script and hit save. And then we can go test it from within an incident to see what it does. Configure our script simply by changing the owner field. In this case, We'll assign our incident to James Bond. And then we'll check our war room. We can see that because we're printing out the arguments, those were printed out. We didn't define any of these as part of our script. XOR automatically passed them in. They include things like the name of the field under CLI name, as well as the new value for the field and the old value for the field. Repeating this test, we can reassign our incident from James to Eve, refer back to our war room, and see the same thing. In this case, the new value is Eve Moneypenny, and the old value is James Bond. For field change trigger scripts, these arguments are automatically passed to the script. We don't need to define them. And we can view all the arguments that are defined on the XOR admin site. Referencing the XOR admin guide for field trigger scripts, we can see the available arguments that are automatically passed into our scripts when we tag it as a field change triggered script. Most importantly, we need things like the new value of the field, the old value of the field, 
And we can even reference things like the user who triggered the actual script. Let's go back to our automation and take a look at how some of these present by adding them into our script. Back in our script, we'll just use our print command to print the old, the new, and even the user argument that's being automatically passed in. If we give it a save, and we pivot back to our incident, we can change our owner from J Eve to back to James and see how this presents in our war room. Going back, you can see that we print out the old, which was Eve, the new, which was James, and then the user object, which contains all of the information about the user, such as the user who executed it. In this case, we're operating as the admin user, the roles for that particular user, and so on. So these can be accessed within your field change trigger scripts, so the script may take different actions as a result. Now, most commonly with our field change trigger scripts, we're going to be operating based on the old value and the new value that's coming in. To save time, we've already pre-built our script, but let's walk through it. For this particular script, we'll be using the old and new arguments to determine which actions the script takes. In the first block, if the owner was no one and is now someone, then we will ask the script to run the execute command to execute the pause timer built-in command, and the timer field we wish to take action upon is the time to assignment. We can see the usage of the pause timer built-in command from our script helper. Next, we wish to start the remediation SLA timer, as we now have an owner assigned. The next block is the reverse. If the owner was someone and the owner was set to no one, then we wish to pause the remediation SLA timer and we'll start the time to assignment timer. Remember from our video on timers that in order to start a timer again, it must be paused and not stopped. So in this way, we can track the total times that the incident remains in an unassigned state and the time that an, the incident is worked once an analyst is assigned. We can save our field change trigger script and we can test this on our incident. Returning to our incident, we can give this a test. In this case, we can unassign James as the owner of this incident. If we take a look at our war room, we can see that the remediation SLA was indeed paused and the time to assignment was started again. If we assign this incident now to Eve, we should see the opposite take effect. In this case, the remediation SLA is now started and time to assignment has been paused. We can test one more time, this time assigning from Eve to James. And in this case, noting that our script does not take any action as the owners have not been blanked out. Now remember when pausing timers, that timers will all stop when the incident is closed. So the action of us pausing these timers to track these different metrics won't matter once the incident itself gets closed. Before we wrap this video, let's look at a pair of other example scripts that we can use within XOR to take action on field change. First one validates the new entry using regex. In this case, we can make sure that our SAM account name conforms to the required regex, which is XOR and three digits. We can associate this particular script with our SAM account name field, again, selecting the field change validate with regex script. What we want to call out from this is to make sure that you do not check the run triggered script after incident is modified. In this case, we would like our script to execute before it actually commits that change to the database. Let's take a look at how this presents on the incident. If we test our script from our incident, in this case, we'll attempt to edit the SAM account name and we'll just enter test. Hitting the checkbox, you can see that we are presented with an error returned from the return error function of the script, informing us that we cannot modify this field because it does not conform to the regex. If we hit OK, we can note that our field has been restored to the original value as the script executed and returned the error before the change was committed. 
In our last example, we have a failed change triggered script that will prevent anyone other than the dbot user, which is the user that executes our playbook tasks for us, from modifying a field. In this case, we'll be grabbing the user argument that is passed in to the field change trigger script and the ID, which is the actual username. And if the user is not dbot, we will use the return error to return a nice error message to the user informing them that they cannot modify this field. To demonstrate, we'll go back to our alert or incident and we have added that particular change trigger script to the suspicious URL field. If we attempt to edit this simply by adding some more text, add a number, you can see that the field change trigger script again executes us, informing us with our username that we can't in fact modify this particular field. And with that, let's review what we did in this video. Field change scripts are useful to enable actions to happen outside of our playbooks. In this case, when the field value changes. You can consider using field change scripts, for example, such as when the severity of an incident is escalated to higher critical, send the appropriate notifications automatically. In the example we showed, you can use them to start, pause, or stop timer fields based on field change. You can also use them to check the values of the field before saving the changes or prevent the field from being edited at all. And with that, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.